Hey guys, it's Kevin again with Mix Coach. Now yesterday I showed you how to change your grid to match your song. And this is a great example to use uh, if, if the song needs to stay the same, but you need to get a click track going with the song at whatever tempo it is. I'm going to show you today a better way to do that, in my opinion, to straighten the song up to match the click track. Because most modern music has a consistent click or a consistent tempo from front to back. You can almost, once you set the click, you can almost, you know, set your watch by it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to tap the click and we're going to make the song match it. This song, as you saw in yesterday's video, um, goes, it gets faster in this bar and then it gets faster here. We've already erased it, but if you want a reference, go back and look at yesterday's video. But what we're going to do now is we're going to make this this match our tempo. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull this up. Make sure, let's turn the conductor off just for a second, and I'm going to select this, and we're going to hit the letter T uh, to tap our tempo. So we're going to play. Is where I long to be. Let me turn the click off so it doesn't mess us up. So we're going to play. Is where I long to be. So grab your fiddle and come jam. Okay, now I hit the, I was hitting the T and the tempo is changing, so it's about 106. So what we're going to do is turn the conductor back on. We're going to double click this, and we're going to make this 106. That's the, the average tempo of the song, okay? Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to turn on elastic time. We're going to turn it to polyphonic, because poly this song is polyphonic. It's got a guitar, it's playing several notes, or several strings, and then a singer. If it was drums, we would do the rhythmic. If it was bass guitar, we'd probably do monophonic. And bare speed actually changes the speed of this depending on the tempo. It's cool for effect, but I haven't found a really good use for it. Okay, so we're going to put it in polyphonic. It's going to take a second. And, uh, well, I've already analyzed this WAV file. Uh, if, if it's the first time you analyzed it, it would go gray, and then it'd come back in just a few minutes. So. If it does that to you, don't fear. You haven't broken anything. It's just what it does the first time it analyzes it, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look. Instead of waveform, I'm going to go to a warp. And you'll notice that as it analyzed it, it put these markers where it felt strong. the strong beats are, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the front of the song, and as close to the front as I can, I'm going to hold the control key down, and I'm going to put a marker there. This will make sure that, uh, I'll tell you why in just a second. I'm going to go to the end of the song now, and I'm going to put one at the end of the song. This is what I call pinning the song. Well, let me show you real quick what the song does if you don't pin it, okay? If I were to take this right here and move it, the song actually stretches as you move this. We don't want the song to do that. It actually gets, let me see if I can make a better example of it. See how the song stretches at the end? We don't want the tempo varying that much. So that's this is why we pin it. See, anything you do between this marker and the one we put before, it's not really going to move it except in the middle. Okay, this is what we want. Let me undo this and uh, show you why I do this. Okay, so the front pin is down, and then I'm going to work on putting the back pin in. Okay, so all I'm doing is holding control and, and clicking on it. Now, you know, you can still hold control and move it as much as you want to. So I've got what I call, I've got it pinned. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and find the downbeats again, like we did in yesterday's video. Nashville is where okay, where is actually on bar two. Now, see this? That's bar two, and this is where it thinks bar two should be. So what I'm going to do is put it in grid mode. This makes it easier to do this. And I'm going to grab it, and it's going to snap right to bar two. Okay? We'll keep listening. Where I long to be. Now right there is start of bar three. Grab your fiddle and come jam with it. Okay, right there, jam. Bar four. There's music up. There's music up. Okay, I think music. that right there should be bar there's music up and down the streets. Ain't no tell. Okay, right there is in bar six. There's music up and down the streets. Ain't no telling who you'll meet. Loud guitar. Loud. Okay, loud guitars is bar seven. Loud guitars. Fancy. Fancy cars is you hear them. That's a uh, beat three where we did yesterday. Fancy cars. See how it slowed down a little bit there? Now, probably when you get close to the end, we can probably let go of this P 
pin because we're not drastically messing up the song. So what we're going to do is hold the Option key and then hit the minus button, or the not the minus button. We're just going to click it. So now now it's going to stretch as we need it to. Okay. Fancy cars. Okay, and that's right on beat six or bar six. Okay, so now there's a, now since it didn't have a pin, it didn't automatically write one there. So what we have to do is manually put one there by holding Control and clicking on the or warp marker. Okay, so superstar. Okay, that stars right there is on beat three, so we're gonna drag it to beat three. Put a marker there. Stars. Okay, so now we've got the song. Nashville. I'm gonna turn the click and I'll let you hear. Nashville is where I long to be. So grab your fiddle and come jam with me. There's music up and down the streets. Ain't no telling who you'll meet. Loud guitars, fancy cars. Superstars. Okay, there was there's a little mess up here, so let's listen to this and see if we can fix it. Fancy cars and superstars. Okay, this is superstars on bar two, I think. Fancy cars and super. Okay, so if we ever get in, in a mess, just just you can go over those and just hit delete, and it cars, should. Cars, fancy cars and superstars. Okay, so I'm sure the stars is on beat three, and everything in the middle will stretch to fit. Stars, that. fancy cars, and superstars. So we'll, we'll pin that down. Fancy cars and superstars. Okay, we're pr we're pretty close there on the end. You could probably mess with that a little bit more. Now, what I want to show you is something. The, the, when you're doing this, is really cool. See, the the tempo is 106. If we wanted to change it to 109, just change the tempo, and the whole grid will change. Oh, hang on. Let me, let me do that one more time. Now, I, I I made a mistake. What you want to do is make this on ticks. Okay. Now, if this is on samples, then no matter where it's pinned, no matter what the tempo is, it's going to stay um, pinned to the time of the song, like minutes and seconds, and not bars and beats. Okay, so what we want to do is move it to ticks, and then when we move the tempo to say 109, then the whole song changes to where Let's change it to something a little bit more drastic, like 115. Nashville is where I long to be. So it's worth the effort to go and pin these bars and beats to your tempo grid so that, you know, especially when you're in pre-production like this, this, uh, this is uh, Ben Parker, a friend of mine who I am producing a record for, and this is a song he just wrote, and he sent me literally something that he strummed as soon as he wrote it onto his iPhone and emailed it to me. And I took the email, put it into my Pro Tools session, and I did a grid just like this, and then I proceeded to put drums on it. Well, you know, after you get everything bars and beats, when you put it on the grid like this using warp markers and elastic time, then you can experiment with different tempos, and this is exactly what we did. So this is the way I prefer to actually take a tempo that wasn't cut with a click and putting it on your grid or on your bars and beats. So that's just a little insight for how I do things. Let me know how you do things. If you want more information like this, come and see me at MixCoach.com. I'll see you next time. Bye.